Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Your or Er by Stephen King. Er is a novella by Stephen King that is basically a little multiverse teaser that he created. So we're going to talk about that today before we get into Dark Tower proper. So as usual, we're going to talk non-spoilery thoughts and opinions up front and then move over to spoilers where we can talk in more detail. So with that being said, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and let's begin. So, your or er, I say your, but in the audiobook they say er, so whatever. <laughs> um, I'll probably just switch back and forth or I'll just say er, I guess. So, the novella centers around a English teacher in the state of Kentucky named Wesley Smith. He is an avid book reader. He loves books, like the physical books, the feel of books, the smell of books, to the point where he prioritizes his reading sometimes over his relationships. And it causes conflicts with his girlfriend, and they end up breaking up over a conflict between old school and new school versus reading books from a computer versus reading physical books. So, it starts off with something really simple and very character driven because King is very good at that stuff. This uh, audiobook, I listened to the audiobook version, and it's only two hours, but you get such deep character understanding. As I said before about Boogeyman, even with a very short page count or a short span, King can pull out the full depth of these characters. He can pull out their entire personality and like their souls and put it on the page in so few words. And he does it really well in this one. Like you really understand Wesley and you understand the nature of his relationship and how it fell apart and how it's both his fault, but it's also um, his girlfriend's fault. So like you really get into his head. So it makes it that much more compelling when we get into the cool multiverse stuff because you really feel attached to him and you understand from his perspective why he's basically freaking out a little bit and you kind of you get a feel for his level of shock even though for me and other people like me finding a device that lets you look into the multiverse would be the greatest thing ever so yes the conversation with this girlfriend results in him buying a kindle and stephen king wrote this novella specifically for kindle so it came out you know when kindle was kind of new so at the time there was only white kindles and they still had the little keyboard and stuff so like there's only white Kindle. So when this man um, orders a Kindle and gets a pink one, he doesn't think much about it because he, you know, he's very much not into the technology and stuff. Some of his students are and they use Kindles in class for their textbooks and stuff. But he's, you know, he's so ignorant to it that he doesn't realize that getting the pink one is actually really weird because they don't make them in pink. So the first time he boots it up, he gets an awesome screen image and that like pretty much took me away immediately. It got me super giddy because like the save load screen was basically a field of roses with a large dark tower like coming up in the back. Like you can see a dark tower at the end of this field of roses and like that's basically the home screen. Well, kind of like the first image, the boot up screen, I guess. And that tells you right there that this is a direct device that's connected to the dark tower. And I was like, yes, <laughs> like, so I was super excited about it. So Wesley is a huge fan of Ernest Hemingway. He's read basically his entire bibliography and front, frontwards and backwards to the point where he understand the way this man's writing works to the point where he can almost identify Hemingway write, uh, Hemingway work without, you know, if it was like, say Hemingway published something under a pseudonym, he could tell by the linguistics and the language and the way of word usage and all this stuff, uh, who the writer actually was. So he knows who Hemingway is. So when he's going through this Kindle and looking up different books and stuff, he downloads some of the hard covers that he has, but he then discovers that um, there are other books that um, are authored by Hemingway that he's never heard of. And as someone who knows his bibliography backwards and forwards, like this is really weird. So he downloads one and then goes to start reading it. And then like by the time he gets probably 20 pages in, he is beyond certain that this is Hemingway. This is 100% Hemingway. It's not a fake. It's not someone trying to use Hemingway's tales and try to recreate or anything like that. He could completely tell and it starts to like freak him out a little bit. So he goes to the other ones, these other titles that he's never heard of and like similar result. So he's kind of like losing his mind a little bit. He's like, this is insane. It doesn't make any sense. And like all in, in my opinion, at this point, he could have still easily written it off, but he didn't. 
So the story kind of continues like that. He enlists a friend from work and then they enlist another a student who also have intimate knowledge of different writers like Shakespeare and um, another, I think, just a random sci-fi writer that King uses or someone I just never heard of. But um, he uses like their information to try to check up on the information that they're finding in this in this Kindle. And basically they all have the same reaction like the writers and stuff that they know frontwards or backwards they're seeing new stuff or stuff being subtracted and or like dates of birth and death being completely changed and stuff like that so they're all kind of like believing it but they can't believe it so it's you know the same reaction anybody would have but the younger person they recruit one of um, Wesley's students and his reaction is closer to my reaction where he's like this is really cool this is interesting like if nothing else you've got like all these thousands of unseen works from all these great authors like if nothing else you got new material you can read so if you can't get anything out of this weirdness like you can at least have that so it's really interesting the way it continues and then there are different categories within the Kindle where you can pick, um, you know, different writers or you can go into newspaper articles and find different news articles. So when they do that, that's when they start to really see that this is a multiverse situation. The Some of the news articles they run across show different instances of reality, like a newspaper article they go up against where Al Gore won the presidency in 2000, and then like Hillary Clinton takes over after him. And then like there's another one where everything happened the same kind of way, but like Hillary Clinton got the nomination instead of Barack Obama in 2008 and stuff like that. And then it was just a funny thing too that King put in there that I thought was hilarious. He says there's only ever one Sarah Palin, like the whole Sarah Palin situation situation was such an anomaly even throughout the multiverse that there's only one instance of it like out of tens of millions of options so it's i thought that was just a hilarious little thing that clearly shows king's political opinions a bit but that was kind of hilarious to me but there's um other instances that's not so recent there's stuff like jfk having not been assassinated and like the way that changed the world there's situations that they run across where the cold war didn't stay so cold and then like in that instance, they get like, you know, there's a clear stop to the news articles they can find because nuclear holocaust. So there's just a lot of very interesting things. And the way it ties into the Dark Tower, I think, is uh, even more interesting because it opens questions while answering questions. Because... <sighs> In most Stephen King stories that we know explicitly are, you know, in one universe compared to another universe, these worlds are not so exactly like our world. They're much more, you know, different in a lot of ways, like the world of The Stand, like how they had that, you know, it was basically the end of the world. So that's probably not a great example because any end of the world situation is going to be weird. So I don't know. But the this is the only time where it's like all these events are so clearly riffs on events that has happened in real life. So it's really interesting. And there are other parts of the Kindle that I haven't mentioned here, but it's definitely worth grabbing the audiobook and spending that two hours and listening to it. It's a great precursor to the Dark Tower proper because there are what's called the Paradox Police. And the Paradox Police are direct crossover characters from both Hearts and Atlantis and the Dark Tower series. So we're definitely going to be reviewing Hearts of Atlantis here on the channel sometime soon. And before that though i think i'm going to get into the first book of the dark tower series so that may be this week or next week we're going to talk about the gunslinger so i want to go ahead and talk about spoilers for a second and talk about this little part of the novella that is truly spoilery because everything else i talked about is very surface level but this other part is actually a spoiler so before we get into spoilers i want to ask have you all read any of stephen king's other multiverse stuff that's not dark tower if you have let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below so, spoiler warning for Er by Stephen King. So, one of the main things that was kept back, like, because a lot of the story is very explicitly, like, on its sleeve, like, the way it's described and stuff. But one of the things that was kept out is that in Er, local, like, you can look at what's going on in your local area. But they have a future sight ability. Basically, you can look upwards of like six months or so into the future but any time after that it becomes very blurry and like all the decisions are so far out that it's hard to have a solid sense of future so the earth um kendall basically has solid information for up to about a month or so so wesley ends up finding out that his girlfriend who is currently his ex because they're going through some stuff like was going to be killed in a bus accident because she's a coach of the school um, sports team of the 
a female basketball team, I think. And um, their bus on the way back from winning a championship is T-boned and they're all killed. So he tries to use this information from news articles from the next day to pinpoint who does the acts, you know, who causes the accident and tries to go stop that person. And they ultimately do. But when he does this, this is infringing upon paradox laws because the way the timeline works in the Dark Tower is everything needs to basically work naturally because the more you mess with it, the more you hurt the Dark Tower itself and you can bring down all reality. So by defying paradox laws, there's a potential that he's damaged the Dark Tower itself. So the paradox police comes in and basically take the candle from him and go, no. <laughs> like, that's basically what happens. Um, so it he fights this argument that's really interesting though he says that like how do you know that the universe itself didn't set this entire thing up purposefully because he ordered a regular kindle from amazon but got this pink kindle and was never charged on his credit card or anything like that and it got to him way quicker than it was supposed to so there's like you know he really doesn't know how he got this particular kindle he doesn't know where it came from or anything like that so he's like for all he knows this is directly a function of the tower and i'm doing exactly what i'm supposed to do and the people the paradox police that come in they can't say one way or the other because they're not that high on the totem pole and even people that are in the know don't truly know everything about the dark tower so they're just like okay but we're taking this and they just kind of leave him alone with that so he just knows about the multiverse and he knows about future sight and stuff like this but he has to just go back to being a regular person and i think that's so awesome king influence like he adds this he injects this really um lovecraftian kind of like unknowable thing like you've peeked into this abyss and now you have to go back to normal but like in a lot of lovecraft stuff there is no going back to normal they're often driven insane but here, he just kind of got to go back to normal and decide whether or not he's ever going to tell anybody because now he has no proof. So I really, really love this novella. It's a great, great story. As I said, the characters are deep and rich and so well fleshed out for such a short book. And it's so well done. I just love it so much. I, I think some of my favorite King stuff has to be like his shorter stuff, like The Body, the um, short story that uh, Sam, uh, Stand By Me was based on like that kind of stuff is really good like The Mist is even based on the short story I think some of King's best work is his short stuff like his very quick get in get out stuff but not to you know knock against The Stand or The Shining or It or anything like that those are brilliant so yeah I'm going to go ahead and the review here and let you know next time we're definitely going to talk about The Gunslinger book one in the Dark Tower series so I thought this is a perfect little you know preface for that so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and say, if you've read your, let me know what was your favorite part. Which one of the multiverses that we got a glimpse at did you think was the most awesome um, one? And which one would you like to explore? Me personally, I want to explore all of them. I wish I could exist in third perspective and just go hop around all of them. Or I would sit there forever reading articles or whatever. But let me know which multiverse you would like to explore in the comments down below. So remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will talk to you all next time.